Hello everyone and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for a, another draft related video. What we're doing at the moment is going through uh, various prospects through the upcoming 2023 AFL draft and what I'm doing is some sort of reacting to their highlights and analyzing them as we go. So last week or early this week I did a video on someone called Clay Hall from Western Australia, a young up and coming midfielder and I went through some footage that's on YouTube and tried to pick apart his game and analyze for strengths and weaknesses. Now I'm continuing that series today with a player that most of you should know by now in Colby McKercher. I'm going to mix it up a little bit. Sometimes I'll do someone early in the draft. Sometimes I'll do a later prospect who's likely to go later in the draft. So, so Clay Hall looks like he'll probably go somewhere in the 30s of this year's draft, maybe the 40s. And Colby McKercher is probably going to go potentially pick two, potentially pick five or six. Who knows? Honestly, Part of the reason I'm doing this is because I have this funny feeling West Coast is going to trade uh, the pick for Harley Reid, get pick two, and I want to do this video before it looks likely West Coast take Colby McKercher, so I don't look biased, because I actually do really love the look of this kid, and he's probably my favorite prospect in this year's draft. Shortly, we're going to go through his highlights, look at what he's good at, what he's not good at, and I think you'll see why I like this kid so much if you haven't seen him before already. Stay tuned as well. I am planning to release my Phantom Draft probably tomorrow. So probably going to do another top 40 or so. Uh, so if you're looking forward to that, stay tuned to the channel. All right, so let's crack in. Uh, once again, I'm going to shout out footy stuff for uh, adding these compilation highlight videos uh, for various players. Like I said, it's not all just highlights. Some of the videos are just highlights, but uh, a lot of it is just like every possession the player gets, which gives you a much broader view of a player's various strengths and weaknesses. So shout out to footy stuff. Go subscribe if you haven't already. Let's crack in. So first up, we're going to be taking a look at Colby McKercher versus Carlton playing for the All-Australian under-18 side. So uh, playing against seasoned veterans, and uh, let's take that into account because, you know, various videos of these prospects, sometimes they're playing against men, sometimes they're playing against the best kids in Australia, sometimes they're playing in their, like, statewide under-18s league, and obviously the level is different in each one. But let's crack in and watch Colby McKercher. It looks like he is number six. That was him there, just getting a handball out. Looks like it was Sanders. Where is he here? Okay, so he's out on the outside of the contest. We know that Colby McKercher is an outside leaning mid. A lot of his damage is done winning the ball on the outside. So we'll see how he goes in this game. He's got some really nice speed there. Forces a, a contest. Doesn't really impact too much. That's all right. This is where he's good. He has a very, very good left foot. I'm hoping this highlights package does him well. I actually don't remember how he plays well in, uh, in this game. So I'm hoping he doesn't just sput it up and, and ruin this video. <laughs> oh, so Harley Reid to McKercher on his right foot. So he is a left footer. It's not a bad connection. A lot of left footers aren't good in their right foot. That was a solid connection. The ball drop looked a little bit awkward, but uh, as we know, most lefties do stick to their left. That's good. See the burst there, the agility, the ability to hit a target. That was nice. He had a little bit of a showcase of what he's capable of there. Gets spoiled in the marking contest, keeps his feet, creates an option. Dolstrup doesn't use him, I don't think. So the thing about McKercher as well is you'll see he's a very lightly built kid. So this is an interesting test for him against some big bodies in the Carlton VFL side. It's a nice handball over the top. So his handball skills look solid. Obviously in the Clay Hall video, I sort of picked up on his handballing technique. McKercher again looks a little bit a little bit more solid. Although some of the handballs there were a little bit questionable. I presume that was a decent handball. Here he is here, running on the outside. This is where he's dangerous. He has a nice side step, doesn't work there, he gets caught. Again, this is a step up in pressure for him. Does well to wrap up a tackle against uh, a bigger body there. Is that Kennedy? Matthew Kennedy from Carlton? It brings him down, wins the free kick. Well done, McKercher. Again, he's a he's a small kid. Here he is in space. This is where he's dangerous. He does have a really lethal first step. Like, it didn't really do anything there, but you can just tell he's just very explosive. Here he is on the outside. Again, this is where he's dangerous. He's such a good ball user. Goes along to a contest. A little bit outnumbered. Yeah, probably not the best outcome, that one. Again, nice little burst of speed there. Gets a distance to get the kick off, but it's intercepted. Nice sidestep. Does really well to get out of trouble. He's super evasive. Some of the kicks are turnovers, but I think a lot of that is Carlton setting up well. Oh, a fend off. 
See, fendoffs like really are as much about technique and timing as they are about actual body strength. I mean, Kirch is not blessed with a lot of size, and yet you'll see in other videos as well, he is capable of a pretty strong fendoff. He just times it really well. That's Rogers from the Gold Coast Suns there. Nice, the way he just pulled that kick back. Again, it was to no one, so again, it doesn't look so good, but the technique is there. Okay, so that's the end of the, the uh, Academy game. Um, that wasn't the most flattering highlights package. What you'll see now is him playing against kids his own age. What we did see, though, is some attributes, some athleticism. A few kicks that didn't come off. His, his kicking style is good. Good leg speed. You watch now when he's playing against kids his own age. This is his highlights comp uh, compilation from the championships, where I think he came second in the Lark medal, if I'm not mistaken. So nice evasiveness there. A lot of players would struggle to do that in that situation. Here again, he just gets that extra meter away from when he started. The kick is, well, it works out to advantage in the end, but he's got a nice penetration on his kick. Oop, someone puts him uh, in a bit of danger with a bad pass. Look at that. Very nice foot skills. I can see this guy playing well at half back. Oh, there we go. Look at that running carry. Or well, that effort, I mean. There he goes. He's still, still part of that chain. He just runs all day, this kid. Runs backwards, creates a switch. Again, that is a really accurate kick. Again, runs to receive. This is how he accumulates a lot of possession because he just runs to um, receive as much as anything. And that was another good kick. Evasive again. So you can see the difference in class. Now he's playing against kids his own age. Uh, you can see him really burn off players. Nice little sidestep, little dummy. He, he's not a... He's not afraid to use that little sidestep and, and dummy. There we go. Another little sidestep and kick from him that's that's accurate there. So you can see him. He racks up a lot of meters gained. That play did well to get the hard ball. Nice. He doesn't receive it back there, but a goal assist. Solid. Now he's number 22, so his number's changed. He was five. Again, a nice little burst of space just to get some separation. He calls for the ball back. You feel like... I think he misses that one. He does. You feel like he probably just received it a second too late, but he probably should have received the handball earlier. That was nice. That was nice. Really composed kick inside 50. Probably wasn't 15 meters, to be fair. Look at the trajectory on that kick and the accuracy. This is a sort of... That's the sort of skill that doesn't become outdated in AFL. The game will change, like different types of players will, you know, be the flavor of each season, each draft. There'll be a different attribute on show, but kicking like that does not go out of fashion. A little bit of a double touch. You know, even for a small guy, there's, there's a degree of core strength there. He just, just held up in the tackle nicely. Again, watch, he'll run and receive here. Just some tidy stuff. A bit of a flower bag kick, but it was still accurate. Again, three possessions in the one chain. Nice little accurate kick. He's got his team halfway up the field there. And then again, ran to receive. I don't think he got the ball that time. Oh, nice. Wins his own ball there and runs to receive. So again, pretty good balance. Like he is predominantly outside as he snaps a clever goal. He's predominantly outside, but you can see that there is some capacity to win his own ball too. And he's going to put on size. He is a very small kid. Inside 50. This is where he's dangerous. If you can find that small... Small sort of lead there. Oh, perfect. Maybe that was a little bit of lazy defending, but it's a good accurate kick. That was him on his right. Nice. Gets a clever handball out to Rogers to receive there. So his handballing looks solid as well. Again, just absorbs the pressure there. Absorbs the tackler. And uh, even though he got taken down with it, he just got that extra second to get his hands free. Oh, look at that. Tell me you don't like that. Look at that. Shimmy's through a few players. Kicks a difficult goal on the 45. Good strong tackle there. Again, just a bit of burst of speed. Just gets in that extra meter. We were talking about in the Clay Hall video, that burst of speed. The coach has just got it in spades to an even greater level. Again, another sidestep. It's a handball off. He's just evasive. There's, there's something Cousins-like about him, I reckon. Wins a clearance here. Takes that extra second to make a decision. Again, just runs around plays with ease and then hits a difficult inside 50 
spot up kick. Nicely done. Okay, that's two videos down so far, and uh, then we're going to watch one from him playing in the Coats Talent League for Tasmania. So we've gone from playing against men to playing against the best kids in Australia. Now he's playing at a lower level uh, for the Tassie Devils against uh, kids around that Victoria League. Obviously, Tasmania is in it, but it's predominantly Victorian League. So again, a step down in, in, um, in talent, but uh, we'll watch how he goes against these guys. Nice. Again, another little fend off. Again, this is kind of about timing. I mean, he's playing against kids a little bit more his size, but nice timing on that. Is that his kick inside 50? No, that's him marking. Kicks the goal as well. So, yeah, got to be happy with that. Wraps up the tackler. That should be ball. Wins holding the ball. Nicely done. just backs himself there's a, there's a real confidence there to just take that extra second and take the game on which I like there's a that's something that Reed does as well these top two prospects they back themselves in to try and change the game with their skills well just a little bit too casual on the uh, on the trying to evade that tackle but he did got the handball off there look at that that's explosive I'll be impressed if he kicks this and he's clutch too. So there's real composure there as well. He's going at a good speed, gets the burst, decelerates, hits it from 50. I like this kid's like goal sense as well. Again, another fend off. So it doesn't. You don't have to be a big guy to do a fend off like uh, Dusty and Harley Reid. Nicely positioned at the back of the contest, sends the ball inside 50. Good strong uh, mark by the defender there. Well done. Oh. Yeah, this one he gets pinged holding the ball for, but I think it was probably more holding the man than anything. He kind of fumbled it, but he never really took possession, so a little bit of a harsh call, that one. Him on the outside. Again, using that right, which is rare. Again, it's not the most compelling ball drop. I'm pretty sure he drops that with both hands, but at least the kick and the trajectory, it's nice. It's nice enough. Left footers do get away with not using their right for some reason. Oh, he just relies a lot on that sidestep. He's, it's a devastating sidestep when it goes right, but he almost knocks himself out. Here we go. He's got a few options here. He goes for the handball, and uh, it was well defended, but maybe that wasn't the best decision, to be fair. A lot of link-up play involved in that again. Very clean one-touch player there, the gather. Turns it into a couple possessions with a fend-off. Doesn't quite affect the handball there. Oh, I think that's... Is that where he's done his ankle? This is the game he got injured. That's right. So it will uh, it will cut his game short. So you look at the stats there. Two goals and 15 touches. Three clearances. Three tackles. That's from just over a half of football. So this guy's production is, is really consistent. On top of the fact that he is also a really damaging ball user by foot. He's got great explosive speed. He's not the most perfectly balanced midfielder. He's clearly outside leaning, but you need types like that. You need damaging types on the outside. And I think this kid actually does have the potential to be Dacos like at the next level. So what I mean by that is that's a huge call to say he's going to be as good as Nick Dacos. I don't mean necessarily that, but whoever drafts him, if it's North Melbourne or West Coast, what I think will happen is that he will start his career as like an unaccountable running defender, sort of like Sheasel, right? I think the difference between he and Sheasel is Sheasel is also a very, very capable half forward. So I think that's where his career will actually go. But say North Melbourne draft McKercher, they'd probably play him in that Sheasel role next year. And you'll see this kid win 20 to 25 touches a game and use the ball like that. And he's got he's got weapons. He's got absolute weapons. For me, he's one of my absolute favorite plays in the draft. And I think he's actually straight up what the Eagles need as well after adding a couple of big inside mins in Jinbi and Hewitt. So we'll see what happens with, in terms of trades and stuff like that. But I want to get that video out, showcase a little bit of what McKerch is about. Needs to put on a little bit of size, hopefully not at the expense of, you know, his his skill set of, you know, being a good outside player as well. He needs to be able to run all day, get to all those contests, still have that burst speed, uh, but he could put on a little bit of size, obviously, to win a little bit more contested possession. There was, there was a bit of contested possession there. It was predominantly outside, but when you use the ball like that, I expect players like that to be parking themselves on the edge of the contest to get that first or second receive. So anyway, guys, that's just my thoughts on Colby McKercher. I think he is one of the most talented midfield prospects I've seen in a while. Uh, Wardlaw was the highest taken pick uh, last year in terms of midfielders. Who was it? So you had Cadman, Sheasel. Actually, I forgot about Ashcroft. Ashcroft was the top rated mid, but I feel like behind, just behind those guys 
is uh, Colby McCurcher. I think he is going to be probably my favorite for Rising Star. Big call with Harley Reid entering the competition next year, but I just think he has the outside game and tools to get the ball heaps and doesn't rely on winning contested ball. And it's going to be hard for any 18-year-old, even if it is Harley Reid, to win plenty of the ball. So anyway, guys, I'm rambling. Big fan of Colby McCurcher. Let me know in the comment section with your thoughts and, of course, some requests for um, you know other players to do in this series. As always, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Stay tuned for the Phantom Draft, which should be coming out tomorrow unless something goes terribly wrong. As always, I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.